Hi there. Today we're going to start a new project and um, this is a plant called a poinsettia plant and this is something you might see at Christmas time. Um, you might have some in your home, you might have some lining the sidewalks, you might see them all around the neighborhood or at the malls or at churches. Um, you'll just see a lot of them and it's probably the most popular Christmas flower. And so we're gonna just draw one of the actual balloons. We're not gonna draw a whole plant and we're gonna be working um, with colored pencil and a little bit, something a little bit different, but we're gonna draw one flower. And um, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but I don't have the green leaves are not around this, but I have just a little sample one. But the interesting fact about poinsettias is this part is the flower. All this part that is the red part we think of that as a whole flower, but this is actually the flower and these are leaves, but they've actually turned red. So they look like they're a red flower, but some interesting facts about um, poinsettia. But anyway, we'll get started in just a little bit. So here's a um, picture on my iPad of a poinsettia. And you'll notice um, before we start drawing, I want you to notice the different sizes and the location and um, maybe even the number of leaves. Remember we talked about this is actually what they consider the flower. These are all um, leaves right here and they happen to have turned red and then here's some green leaves behind that are below. But notice how the flowers near the center are smaller. There's a lot of overlap going on. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, I've got an actual one here. So you're seeing this one is a silk flower, but it's got like the little leaves here and there's overlap. They're overlapping and the leaves underneath are get bigger and bigger. So the ones on top are smaller and then they get a little bit bigger and then they get extra large. So that's what we'll be working with. Um, So one of my sources for flowers when we're drawing is calendars. Um, a lot of times people have picture calendars that they hang on the wall and they have beautiful pictures that photographers have taken. So I have a variety of pictures of flowers and I just wanna show you and I wanna talk about the details and things that you need to notice. Before you draw a flower, you wanna look at the shapes of the petals. Um, you also wanna count the petals and observe some details so that you draw a flower that looks specific to the flower you're drawing and not just a symbol of a flower. Um, so this flower has six petals, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's an interesting thing that's going on with the petals though. I noticed three of them are overlapping the other three. So I have three on top right here and three that are underneath and there's some overlap. So that's just observations about this particular flower. We won't observe the color as much as the shape right now. This flower, it's important to count the petals. So I could pick any one of these because we're just drawing one. So if I pick this one, one, two, three, four, five petals. One, two, three, four, five petals. Every, it's a hibiscus. Every hibiscus is gonna have five petals unless one of them got torn off or something. So it's within the plant, the plants are gonna match. You're not gonna grow hibiscus on a poinsettia plant um, any more than you're gonna grow peaches on an apple tree. An apple tree is gonna produce all apples. Peach trees will produce all peaches. You might have varieties of apples and varieties of peaches, but um, you have to have different trees for each fruit. The same with the flowers, different plants are gonna have different flowers with different um, characteristics. So this has five petals. Something I noticed, there's an overlap, but each petal overlaps another petal. Like this petal overlaps that one, and then this one overlaps that one, this one overlaps that one. It goes kind of in a circular, almost like a pinwheel that might blow in the wind. So that's just observations about a hibiscus. Um, I'm not sure the name of this flower. This one's really interesting, but um, just things to notice about it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are kind of blended together, but there's eight petals. And with each, within each of the eight petals, I notice a little burst of little white blooms that come out. And it looks like most of them, when once it's full grown, it looks like there are sections of three. And then it has a, a center that's yellow with little, um, looks like little 
shapes um, that they would be real fuzzy. But just interesting facts about this flower. This flower, there's not, um, I don't see overlap necessarily of petals, but I see one, two, three, four, five, six petals. What I observe is this petal is wider than this petal. This one's a wider petal. This is skinnier. This is wider. This is skinnier. So there's a pattern going on this, wide, skinny, wide, skinny, wide, skinny. And, um, and I see one, two, three, four, five lines in the wide petal. And I see one, two, three lines in the skinny petal. So we, if this was a flower I was drawing, those would be the things that I would notice. Um, this one kind of grows like a, kind of like the poinsettia that we're gonna do because it's got like a center bloom and then it's got smaller petals in the middle and then the petals that are underneath that are being overlapped by the little ones are bigger. So I would look at those details before I start drawing this flower as well. This one has um, six petals as well as that, like the first one. And it has an overlap pattern like the first one, but it has a little bit different shape petal. Um, there's one, two, three on top and one, two, three on the bottom. The shape of the petal kind of looks like the shape of a leaf. It's got maybe a little bit of a point, but it's pretty oval shaped. Um, so I will observe that. And then there's little tiny, looks like little oranges, like miniature oranges in the center of that flower. Um, and then I've got a couple other ones, so I won't notice the, so much the detail of the drawing, but I notice the color patterns. The edges of the petals have white, and then the inside is pink. There's like little veins in there, and the petals in the middle are smaller. They get a little bit bigger, and then they're the biggest on the outside. So that's similar to what you might see in the poinsettia. And then here's a um, water lily, and I notice um, even the shapes of these, um, they're a little bit pointed here. They, as they get bigger, they round out a little bit on the edges so they're not as pointed as right there. Almost reminds me of a, um, an artichoke. It, you kind of peel it back, and, um, but it's a pretty pink color. And I notice it's white kind of in the middle and it gets darker pink as it gets on the outside of the petals. But anyway, just observations that we're gonna notice whenever we draw from real life. So here's my picture that I have on my iPad. Hopefully you can see that. If you want to screenshot this, or if you wanted to, if you have a device or something where you can pull up a picture and have it to refer to, that would be great. If you have an actual plant, or if you wanna get a silk plant, like a fake plant, um, you can get something like that at Walmart or Michaels. Just, you could even buy one little bloom. I've seen they have them at Michaels. And if it's not, real, like if it's silk, it won't um, wilt. It'll last longer as you're drawing it and it will stay the same. So um, I like to always have something in front of me that represents what it looks like in reality um, and that will help me. So I'm not just drawing out of my head and trying to remember what does it look like. So I'm gonna have this in front of me while I'm drawing um, or a um, an actual photograph in front of me, okay? So I've got my whiteboard here just to talk a little bit about the flower and drawing the flowers. If I'm playing Pictionary, Pictionary is a really fun game. We play that at the end of the year for fun and we draw things and we try to guess what the person's drawing. And um, speed is important. To draw fast is important. To get people to guess the thing quickly, that wins the game. So if I'm drawing a flower, if my clue is flower for um, Pictionary, I'm going to draw as fast as I can. So I might go like this. And if they didn't get it, I'd go like that. And they probably would guess it right away. But that doesn't look like this, okay? Um, this has layers, smaller flowers, bigger, or petals bigger in the end. Um, but when I draw this, I'm going to draw, I have to notice the shapes of the petals. And these petals are actually leaves. So they're kind of a leaf shape. So leaf shape is kind of like this. I say it's a frown and a smile sometimes. And you can stylize that. It can be a frown. It kind of goes up like this. And then it kind of goes up like that maybe. It might have a little point. But um, we want to look at the things as shapes. So I'm not going to draw 
poinsett poinsettia. I'm not gonna say here's the center and I'm not gonna draw a bunch of circles like this or ovals and then draw more ovals like this. That might look like a flower, but it's not gonna look like the poinsettia because it's the shape of the petals is not matching the shape of the petals on the actual flower. So I'm gonna wanna draw in more detail and I wanna make it more realistic. So um, when I draw this, I'm, I might just draw the simple middle, but when I draw the petals, I'm gonna look at each petal and I'm gonna um, try to draw them so they have the same shape. And I might have some overlap, like that one's overlapping that one. This one is coming out a little bit bigger. I'm gonna run into that. And then I've got a little one here and then a bigger one here. But notice how the shapes are more like the shape of the actual petal. And then I've got a bigger one here. And this one kind of overlaps that one over here. Wipe that off. And then this one would be a bigger one here and then maybe a bigger one here. But notice how the shapes of my petals match more the shape of the flower itself. So we want to be aware of that before we start drawing. Okay, so now we're going to start on actual paper. So here I have my paper and we're going to start drawing. I'm going to draw with my eraser um, and I can, you can use like pink pearl like this and use the edge. It can be new, it can be older, you just have to find an edge or you could draw with the tip there. But if you remember what we did was draw like this and we can kind of adjust it. That's how it would be with my lead my pencil or I can do this and then I can draw the petals around like that and so on. What I want to, this is not my real paper right here, but what I want to review is we don't want to draw directly with pencil really hard. If you're comfortable drawing directly with pencil and not having to do the eraser first, that's great and feel free to do that. But if you're not sure of the lines and you're drawing with the pencil, you don't want to draw super heavy because if I draw like this, and then I decide I want to erase that because it's um, it's the wrong shape or something. I can erase and erase and erase, and that's not going to come off because I've drawn it too dark. Okay. Now, size-wise, we don't want to draw a little cute little flower like this. No, that's kind of silly. Um, but we don't want to make the flower the end product, this tiny little flower when we have all this space. Um, we want the flower to almost touch the edges of the paper. Um, and if some of them get cut off, that's fine. If you look at my um, photo on the iPad, we call that cropping where we've brought the lines and the borders in. But see how the petal up here is, is a little bit knocked off, um, got cut off a little bit. And this one's cut off a little bit. so. We want to fill our paper with the flower and we're going to color the whole paper is going to be colored in soluble color and some greenery around the outside too probably. So when we draw, we don't want a tiny drawing like that. We want it to be bigger and we don't want to draw hard with the eraser because then if I decide, say I drew a little thing like that and that was like too, too small and then I want to make it bigger so then I go like that and it's like, oh, I don't like the shape of that. And then I erase that, it doesn't erase very well. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna draw really, really hard because this is gonna be the one I really want. But what's happening is I'm gonna indent my paper because I'm pressing so hard with a pencil. And when we go to color and color pencil, even if I can erase those lines that aren't getting erased very well, the colored pencil is gonna get stuck in the groove and it's gonna, the groove of the, indentation you made with the pencil when you drew so heavy will show up. So we want to draw really lightly in regular pencil and um, before we do the drawing. So back to my paper that I'm actually going to use. I'm going to draw with my eraser and I'm going to look for an edge and I'm just going to kind of block out a little circle for that center point. And I'm looking at my photo and I'm going to start and go from the center out and I'm using my the edge of my eraser and I'm just laying out where the leaves should go and I don't know if you'll be able to see on the video where I'm putting my eraser marks but hopefully that will 
show up pretty well for you. So I've got the first ones and then I've got like another layer over here, a little bit smaller one, another, a little bit smaller one over here. Okay, and then I've got this, it's kind of going, it's in little sections. So I've got my three smaller ones and then here's like three like little bigger ones and then I've got super big ones. And remember this one kind of went off the page and then this one went off the page here a little bit. And then I've got one that kind of goes off the page here. And then one that goes off the, to the side here. And then I've got one more that kind of overlaps here. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see. And you remember your eraser desk is just kind of a guide. I'm still looking at the photo. So this is, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw in just sketching where these little, where the actual, what they call the flower is, okay? So I'm just sketching those in really quickly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing the actual leaves. And remember, I wanna keep in the personality, they're a little bit jagged maybe, and they're pointed at the end. So I wanna make sure that I have them with the point um, on the end, okay? So. This one here and move it just a little bit. Okay, so there's that one. Then I've got a bigger one. And the next row kind of come in here. The next row come in here. And it kind of comes out like that. And then I've got another one coming here. And I've got I've got overlap going on. Then I've got a bigger one that's kind of going off the page here. Okay. Then I have another one that's pretty big that's going off over here. That one didn't quite go off the page. This one's kind of going off the page a little bit. So this one's going off. And then I've got one over here. It goes there like that. And then I've got one over here. It's not quite going off the page, okay? So that's my general layout, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of my eraser dust. And then I'm gonna look at it. Okay, so I've drawn two. I've got one here and I've got one here, okay? So um, here's my two. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to, these are all the red leaves. I'm not gonna draw the green leaves yet. The green leaves are gonna be coming from underneath. So if you see here, there's like green leaf here and green leaf there. Um, I'm not gonna draw those yet. I'm gonna just color in this first. So what I'm gonna do if I have areas where my um, or pencil is kind of dark, I'm gonna erase it. Like if I have a dark line here like that, what's gonna happen is when I color with a colored pencil, that's gonna show if my colors are not dark enough. So I'm gonna, what we call, undraw some of the lines. That means I'm just gonna go along the lines. I'm not gonna just erase all over the page like this. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna go along each line of the petals of the flower or the leaves and I'm just gonna lighten them up a little bit. If they're too dark, they're gonna show up. So I'm gonna lighten the lines. If I erase them too much, don't worry. Don't erase it and say, no, I've, now I have to drop back. That's typically what people do and they, then they just go back and put it dark again. Don't worry if you erase it too much, your brain will figure it out when you get there, okay? You'll you'll find the line because you you drew it originally. So you'll be able to re, um, establish the line, but we just want to do that with the colored pencils, okay? So now I'm ready to go, okay? So when I'm done, I want to make sure I write my name or label the back of the paper. Sometimes we don't label the paper right when we're working because if I'm, like I'm doing this drawing here and I maybe I don't like it or something, I've drawn too dark or something I just don't feel like I'm fixing, I just want to start fresh, I might turn the paper over and then draw fresh. But um, if I'm happy with this, I'm gonna keep this so I don't need to draw on the back. So then I will print my name. And my, my first name is Lori, so I'm gonna print Lori. And then my last name is Helfer. Normally I would go by Mrs. Helfer, but this will help you um, see a little bit better. So print your first name, your last name, and then if whatever classroom you're in. If you're 1A, if you're 3A, if you're 4B, whatever your classroom is, I want you to put it on there, okay? So I'm gonna put 3A. 
So we'll pretend I'm in 3A. So that's how you should label your artwork each time, okay? So once you've drawn it and you're happy with it, turn it over and print your name on it, okay? So I think I have my name on both of them. Okay, so I'm good. All right, so um, that's the first part of just getting it all laid out and um, I'll get my colored pencils out next. Okay, here's a little something just for fun. This is um, a photo of just um, some color poinsettias. They're, um, this is kind of a light green and these are pink and then there's some red ones underneath. Um, but we're, we're gonna focus on the red prob probably, but if you want to do a pink and you found a different color one, you do a different color, you choose. Um, I'll let you just pick whichever color you wanna do. But I'm gonna do red because it seems more Christmassy and, um, and that's what I'm gonna stick with. But just thought I'd show you that picture. Okay, so we're gonna be working with colored pencils. And I took my, this is a set of 50, but I think even 24 would be a good number to have, but I put them in a box so they're easy to care for. I don't want to, I have an old box here um, and I can mess with it because it's not, these are kind of older and used up. I don't want to drop my box like that. I don't wanna bang it around and I don't wanna tap my pencil on the table. We have to be careful of the pencils because they, it's the lead that's in here, it's compressed. Um, it's almost like a, a lead of, that has color, but it's compressed tight, but it can break easily. So if I color hard and press really hard, sometimes it'll, it'll break like that. It'll just kind of shatter, or, you know, and then you'll have crumbs and pieces. So with a colored pencil, I wanna be careful because this goes all the way down the whole shaft, this, um, the color part. But if I bang the pencil or drop it and I don't treat it really well, the pencil lead that's inside will start breaking down in there. So that's one thing I have to be careful about. When I sharpen color pencils, I don't want to sharpen them using an electric pencil sharpener because sometimes it sharpens them too much and it just starts eating away and um, then you use, it doesn't last as long. So, and plus you don't have an electric pencil sharpener if you're riding in the car or you're drawing at the park or something. So I always have a hand sharpener. And when I sharpen, I don't want to just keep winding and winding and winding because what's going to happen is I'm going to sharpen the wood, but see how there's no lead? It broke off in here because I sharpened it. So you see the piece of it there? So what I want to do is I'm going to look I'll show you my little pencil sharpener. You can see the blade through here. I've got this little, nice little, kind of clear a little bit so I can see through. So I can see the blade. I'm gonna push hard and I'm gonna wind once and I'm gonna pull it out and look at it. Then I'm gonna wind again. And after I wind it, I'm gonna press the lead down in here because in case it got broken, I wanna make sure it's in there. So every time I sharpen my pencil, I'm gonna pull it out and push this in there and then um, it should be secure. But if it breaks like that, that means the pencil lead is broken down in there and I've damaged the pencil a bit. So I'm gonna be careful to sharpen it and hopefully I'll get past that broken part. Um, and I don't need to sharpen it so it's super sharp. I kind of like a little bit duller because I'm gonna do, be doing shading and it will work better if it's a little bit duller. Um, so this one got broken down quite a bit. Um, in there in the damage. So they're a little bit delicate, but um, but notice how I didn't sharpen it super, super sharp. Okay, see it's a little bit duller. It will color better and it will shade better if it's a little bit duller. But every time I sharpen it or when I'm working with it, I'm going to press down in it a little bit just to make sure it doesn't break and fall out, okay? So, that's one part. Now, um, what I wanna do is I'm looking for reds. So sometimes I'll set my box up like this and I'm gonna be doing, this one goes to the other set. I'm gonna do a point, poinsettia and it's red. So I'm gonna look for anything that is somewhat in the red family. I might even put some pinks in there, maybe some orange tones. Um, there's a red red. And I'm just gonna kind of slide the pencils gently. There's a pink in case I want to use it. Here's a burgundy. And here's kind of a deep couple of burgundy reds. So these are kind of, um, this is all basically the red family, okay? So I'm gonna put these over here. 
And the same as when I'm doing the other, I'm gonna just test the colors. I'm, I'm guessing, okay, that's, I'm gonna put that on that end. That's a definite red that I'm gonna use. This is kind of a deeper red and I can blend them together. This red for sure, that's a red red. So I know I'm gonna use those for sure. Okay, I'm just gonna roll them down here. So let's, let's put them here. And then, um, that pink, I don't know that I'll use that, so I'm gonna put that away. And this one's kind of a pinky tone. I don't know that I'll use that one either. A little bit of an orange, I might use that. That might be a good variation. That's a good deep, deep kind of red. That one's probably a little too pink. This one's kind of a deep burgundy, might work for shading. And I'll go ahead and keep that so I have one pink in there. And then this one, Kind of too brown for me. Okay, so I've got a few colors, and I'm my obvious colors I'm going to use are all the reds. Okay, they're they're pretty deep red, and then these are my extra ones, and I'll we'll talk about the extra ones as we get going. So back to my picture. So I have my colored pencils. I have my picture. My name's on it, and I'm going to start doing shading. And if it helps me to have the photo, I'm gonna have the photo available. So what I'm gonna do with the um, coloring in and the shading, um, I'm gonna start with just a general red. And I'm gonna leave these little guys here um, empty and I'll, I'll deal with the center later. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in I'm gonna start from the center and I'm gonna draw the smaller leaves first. So I'm gonna outline them and I might do some more jagged lines and maybe a little bit more detail, but I'm gonna start by outlining the first ones that I'm gonna do, okay? Okay, so that's my, my first ones, okay? And then the next row will be the next smaller ones. So then I'll go ahead and do those. So I've got some overlap here. And I'm not outlining them super dark. I'm just trying to clarify where, where they go. Okay, so this one is here. Okay, and I've got one over here. I'm gonna adjust this one and make that one a little bit wider. So if you along the way want to adjust, you can. I'm gonna erase that extra pencil there. Okay, and I wouldn't always necessarily outline the whole thing first, but I'm not sure on the video what you can see, so I'm thinking this will be good to outline, just to clarify what's gonna be red. And then later we're gonna have um, some green leaves, okay? And adjust that line because I think that would look better there. And then I've got this one. Okay, and we're going to be working with colored pencil, but if you don't have color pencil, you can always do it in crayon, and crayon will look just as um, good. Okay, so there's my general layout with the red. Okay, now um, I don't want to just color everything in by just coloring all the way across. I wanna do one leaf at a time. And I'm also gonna notice um, these are actual leaves, and so they're gonna have veins and um, as well. So um, once I have this outlined, I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna look at the center and I'm gonna lighten that up a bit and I'm gonna bring my iPad over here so you can see. I'm gonna do this little part right here and that's gonna take some different colors. Um, it looks like I have yellow kind of a yellowish white and then some pinkish red and some green. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that right now. So I'm gonna look for the greens that I might use. So I'm gonna leave those right there and throw some greens in here that might be possibilities. And um, kind of like a, I'm gonna throw a white in there just for fun. And the yellow isn't like a bright, bright yellow. It might be kind of a 
it's not even that bright. I don't know if I have a, it could be kind of a, yeah, this seems like it's closer to the color. So I'm gonna go with that. And sometimes you can, let me show you. If you're working with a photograph um, that's on a paper, sometimes I will color, I'll color on the edge of my paper here if I think that's the right color. And then I will actually lay that up to that and say, does that match? If I'm using a pink, a pinkish red or something, I might do the same thing on the edge over here. And I might actually, and the reason I do it on the edge is then I don't have white in between. And then I might bring that over there and say, does that match? That kind of matches the part of the little tiny bud in the flowering part. So that kind of gives me some idea of color. So this one was one and um, this one over here. And then I'm going to have, oh, I need to get my greens. So then I'm going to have some greens and um, that's kind of bright. Let's see what, hmm. That's probably too bright of a green. So I'll get rid of that one. This one I think is a good one. So I'll do the same thing. I can do it on the edge of my paper here. And then I can go back over and I'll just lay that on there and say, does that look like it? it's close enough? And I'll be doing some blended colors, but I'll just want to have my general colors that I'm gonna use there. So, so there I am and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll set these three right here. I'm going to actually look closely at this. Um, at the little inside. And I see some green coming out of the middle. I see some like little stems coming out. And then I see some little buds. So I see a little bud here. So I'm just gonna darken in where those little buds are. This one's going kind of sideways. This one's going a little bit sideways. I have one over here. And the nice thing about when you're drawing from real life, um, the flowers are in process of growing. So you don't always have every petal is um, the same size. One might be smaller than the other, even buds on like a rose bush. They're at different um, stages of their growth. So one might be smaller than the other just because it isn't as old or hasn't been blooming as long. Kind of the same way with your brothers and sisters. Um, you may be taller than your younger brother because he hasn't had a chance to catch up with you yet. Um, I have three nephews and the funny thing is the youngest one was the tallest in the end. And um, so you never know, but see how these are all different sizes and different processes. This one over here is blooming a little bit more. So it's a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna add this little detail to that. This one has a little bit of this reddish color in it. And this one has a little bit of the reddish. That one doesn't, this one kind of does. And not only are they gonna be at different stages, they're gonna be at different angles too. So like this one, um, this one's looking right at me. This one is kind of like a side view on this. So there's green coming um, coming with some of them. This one's totally a green bud. And um, there's a green bud right here with no flower on it. So if I'm gonna put any detail, I'm gonna use this red for some of the detail. This is a bloom that's um, looking kind of right at me. This one's kind of going a little sideways. And this one's kind of looking a little bit sideways. And this is a little bit sideways as well. So we've got some different angles. And then the green's gonna show a little bit more on that one and a little bit more green here. So I'm just doing a little, little detail right in here to establish what's going on here. And if I wanna come in with a darker green to accent some of the um, lines or create a little bit of dimension um, or shadows, I can do that as well, okay? But that's my general center, okay? So I'm gonna move on and go back to the poinsettia leaves. So if you look, let me go back. 
if you look here, you can see veins, just like you would see veins on, um, on regular leaves, like a vein goes up there and then you've got the lines here. But be careful not to make them, see it curves a little bit like this. Don't make them just perfectly straight. Give, go with the curve of the leaf. So if the leaf is curving, the line might curve a little bit. This one's a little bit straighter, but that one kind of curves. Okay, and I'll show you in my other sample here, you can see like that. And when the leaf is curling, that means it's, um, like if you do a curved line, it kind of, the leaf kind of curls down. If you see, it kind of goes like this. So I might, do the veins as I draw. Like I might just do that to give it roundness. If I just go straight, um, like I've got a leaf here, I'll do a couple leaves. So I've got my leaves here. If I just go straight and straight, 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 versus curved and curved, the curved lines, if you can see the difference, it's gonna look more realistic than this, okay? This almost just looks like, um, crisscross straight lines, like I'm making a tic-tac-toe thing or something, but this has a curve and it makes it look more realistic. So as I'm drawing and if I'm doing um, the veins, look at the picture and see, is there a curve? I see a little bit of a curve and it kind of curves in up like that. So I might, as I go, do some of this just to give me the illusion of the three-dimensional shape okay so this one might go up like that kind of curves down and then it curves up and then that one might curve that direction but that gives me some um idea of some dimension okay and so as we're shading we don't want to just so here's my leaf. I don't want to just color like this and color the whole thing in a hurry. I mean, that's really messy. What I want to do is I want to shade just a little bit at a time and I'm going in little increments, kind of like what we did before. I don't want to try to shade the whole thing because it's going to be hard to control going outside the line. So I'm just going to do little, little strokes. And it doesn't matter the direction I'm coloring if I'm blending well and I'm not coloring too heavy. Um, I might go along the edge here and it doesn't matter, but see how much smoother this is and how more contained that is? It's because I'm doing little strokes. So I want to do little strokes. So when I'm coming out of the inside there, um, I've got my inside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably outline this area of where these the little blooms are, where, which is the actual flower part, what they would say. And I'm going to outline that and then I'm going to come out here. And I'm just going to do small strokes. And I'm going to go in layers of color. So right now I'm just going to do a general coloring. If It helps me to turn the page because I can see better um, when I'm pointing the way I'm holding my pencil and I'm right-handed so um, so I can see better the left side of the flower here. So I'm just gonna shade in each of the petals, okay? And I'm not gonna go super dark yet. If I lose my veins, I can come back and add them and make them show up a little bit better, okay? And I can always come back and do that. But I'm gonna start with my little guys. If I have any extra pencil, pencil lead that's showing, and I want to clean that up a little bit. Don't just erase all over the colored pencil because you might smear that, but if I have a bit of pencil left there that I don't want to show, I might just lift that up before I continue, okay? So I'm gonna go back and notice I'm just doing little strokes. I'm not pressing super hard. I'm not trying to cover all the ground like this and I'm doing one petal or one leaf at a time. And I'm just giving a general light red color first, okay? And you've gotta be patient. Color pencils are gonna take more patience, even more patience than crayons because it's a tiny little point that you're using and you're gonna cover the same amount of ground the nice thing about color pencils is they, um, you can do detail really well with them because they have such a fine point. Um, also, you can blend them. That's another advantage. Um, 
One thing I do like better than um, with crayon, crayon is very waxy and sometimes you get wax, it smears and you get chunks. And with color pencil, you don't generally get that. Um, it, once you color with it, it stays pretty well. It doesn't melt, it doesn't smear. Um, you can't rub it and have it smudge and smear because it's pretty, it's pretty um, stable on the surface wherever you put it, okay? So if I wanna reinforce my lines, I can just bring those back if I feel like I'm losing them. And you can stylize these if you want. This one kind of curves down like that, a little bit up. But from what I saw from my sample, that they come out at the same point on either side, either half, half of the leaf. So that would be the style. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do another leaf. I'm gonna get rid of this eraser stuff. So get rid of the pencil, cause I changed my line just a little bit. So now I'm gonna go to my next leaf, okay? And this kind of comes in here and it kind of strings in there. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna color my next leaf. And we're gonna find that they're all gonna look the same and they're gonna, one leaf might blend into another. And as we get going, I'll show you how to separate the leaves from each other and, it's, and how we will create some dimension in our picture. And we'll create the dimension by, um, by putting shadows or darker areas where there's overlap, okay? So, but I'm doing little strokes. I think I'll probably do all the leaves with a, in a light red before I start doing some shadows, okay? So, um, that one goes there, and this one is underneath. There, you might see from the bottom of the leaves where they kind of attach, um, you might see a little line because there's a little bit of a stem that comes out from the middle for the leaves. So you might just see that. And then we'll fill in the shadow later. But if you want to, as you go, do the, um, do the stems, I mean the veins, and you can do them, you know, whatever angle you think is good. If if you see it like where it's kind of curved a little bit, you can curve it and do it however you want, but you can do that later if, if you like as well. But notice my paper's not always just staying like this. I'm gonna turn my paper in whatever direction I need to and able to color um, smoothly. If I want it, if I'm doing a curve and it my the curve naturally goes this way. Um, I might turn it to do it from this angle, but but I want to be careful not to rush and do too many big strokes and not go too dark. Here's my bad example again. So if I'm doing a leaf and I'm not real patient and I start going patient, but then I'm like no, then I'm going to have to do filling in because the lines aren't even. So then I'm still going to have to go back and fill it in. It's going to take me longer. And then if I have darker ones, then I'm gonna have dark straight lines and it's not gonna go with the flow of the leaf. So I want to color kind of in the direction of the flow of the leaf or the curve of the leaf if possible. So if there's a curve and I know it's going in a certain curve, I'm gonna color in that direction. So it's not just straight color lines. And I'm generally trying to not show my color lines when I get into here, we might end up losing a little bit of the detail there and I might bring some of that back. I got this little white crayon to, a white color pencil to be able to just lighten up some of the like peach color to a little bit lighter. The white won't show up so much on white paper, but sometimes it will just um, brighten up a little bit of what's going on there. Okay, so now I'm on my I'm on my second layer of the red leaves, which we might consider being petals. And I 
if you were doing this here at school, it would probably take you a whole class time to just shade the whole thing in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep coloring and have it be in real time on the video. So I won't stop and then show you that I'm already done with it. I'm going to go ahead and just keep, keep working and, um, if you need to stop the video at any point and then pick it back up, feel free to do that. Um, and I might just edit it at certain points um, where I think it's gotten a little bit too long for you to complete in a matter of uh, one week. So we'll, we'll break this down into different weeks, how we've done with the other ones. As far as a working surface, I have a piece of construction paper that's taped to my um, tabletop here. And that way, if I color off the edge, like I'm coloring off right here, off the edge of my paper, it's not gonna get color pencil on the table. Color pencil isn't so bad. It won't get on the table as badly as the wax or paints. But um, another advantage of having a piece of construction paper or a little bit of paper pad underneath, it makes the coloring um, a little bit softer. It blends better. It doesn't blend as well if you're coloring. Let me get rid of these pencil lines here. If you're coloring directly on the hard surface of a table, it doesn't, um, for some reason, it doesn't blend as well in the shading. So, and notice how my pencil is kind of, um, if you can see it, it's kind of fat, it's dull. I don't want a super sharp, sharp lead because it's going to be very pointed. And if it's very pointed, it's going to take longer. And I might break the point off anyway, but it's going to take longer to, to color. So I'm going to, as long as I can still color and have some lead showing, it's a bigger surface to color on. So I like this. Um, I like it not being super sharp. So don't think you always have to have a super sharp pencil. If you're doing detail or really fine, fine lines, that's when you do want a shorter, I mean, a sharper pencil. Um, and that's when you would probably sharpen it more often. But I'm just doing a nice shading, so I really don't need to. Now, when I get to the point that I do run out of pencil lead and I start rubbing the um, wood part of the pencil and it starts digging into my paper, that's when I might want to sharpen or when I see it's getting near. So I see it's getting it's getting worn down here. So remember, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna wind and wind because I don't want it to break. I'm gonna go one time around and I'm gonna just press it down and wow, look what one circle in there did. It sharpened it really nicely. So um, that should last me for a little bit longer. Okay, see how it's a little bit, I'll do it on the very tip. See how it's super sharp there? It doesn't color as well, so I, that's why I like having it be more fat or a little bit whiter tip. And remember, if you just go around and around and around, like if I just keep doing this and doing this, it's what's in, ends up going to happen. Ends up happening is my lead gets broken and it gets stuck in here. Oops, there it is. And I sharpened it. It's super sharp, but I sharpened too long that it just kept eating away the wood and it broke this tip off. So be careful. When you're sharpening, don't sharpen too long. And I literally just do one time around. I press it in firmly, but one time around, and then I pop it out and look at it. And that's often enough sharpening for me. So yeah, as you're going along, I'm seeing some extra pencil lead that I didn't, um, I kind of left because I changed my line a little bit. So if you get to a pedal and you see some pencil line, um, stop and erase it if you don't want it to show up. So it's kind of relaxing. Um, a few years ago, I don't know if it's so popular now, there were coloring books for adults, not just like it used to be kids had coloring books, but they had coloring books for adults with a lot of very detailed, intricate designs. And they said it was really relaxing it was a good way to relax and rest because you're not thinking too hard and you're just coloring. And um, 
I like coloring. Coloring's fun. You, it brings things to life and it's just a fun skill to learn. And when you um, have projects in school in your class for all different, like if you have to write a research paper or write a paper about somebody or you do a book report, sometimes you have to draw a picture with it or you present a picture with your report. Um, so when you do a lot of artwork and you do things in an art class, a lot of times you're going to be able to um, use the skills that you learned and practiced doing art projects to do projects for other things. Even if it's just something for fun at home or it might be a special report on a person in history or a book that you read. So, um, so everything we do in life we learn, we can learn from and we can use that skill and apply it to something else. So the overall look of my picture when I'm done, this flower is gonna, it doesn't look super deep red yet. Um, it looks kind of pink. Um, and pink is actually a part of the red family. If I was painting and I wanted to, and I only had red paint and white paint, and I didn't have pink paint, if I mixed some red into my white paint, white paint, it would make a pink color. So sometimes we can blend colors, um, but red is how we get pink. And um, if I'm using a color pencil, like if I go super, super light here, it can have an appearance of pink. And the darker I go, the more true it's gonna to be to the actual pencil lead color. But, um, but with the pencil um, box I have, I actually have pink in there, so if I wanted to do something pink, I could use pink. But if I wanted to darken my pink, I could give it a little bit more of this pencil line. If I wanted to have my pink be a little bit darker, I could um, just blend some red in with it. Okay. So we're almost done with our first layer of color which will take us a while. So once we have our first layer, that's when we're gonna start um, thinking about adding dimension. Okay, so now I can tell the difference between this leaf and that leaf because I've outlined it, but on the actual leaves, I don't see a dark outline on this leaf. I see a shadow, like I see a shadow under there, I see a shadow here. And I'm not sure how many shadows you can see with the iPad, but if you see this leaf, you'll see shadows here and it might be brighter where it, the sunshine or the light shines on it. If I'm looking at this, see how there's shadows in here? There's a shadow here, this is a deeper red. There's a lighter red here and then there's a shadow there so it's deeper. So we want to create shadows. And we don't want to just outline the leaves really dark and then that's the way we show the leaves. So what I'm going to do is um, I can start wherever I want in my picture, but I think I will start, I'm going to start right in between these two leaves here. So I'm going to establish, this is my line from this leaf and this is the line from this leaf here. Okay, and I might make it a little bit jagged. But I want to make this leaf look like it's um, coming forward a little bit from that leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm going to start in the corner right here. I'm going to color a little bit more darkly right in the corner there. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you, and we're going to keep doing layer on layer. But I'm going to show you the effect it's going to have. I don't have to make this whole leaf super dark all the way down, but um, I will extend the darkness because I want it to be darker red anyway. But what's going to happen is I'll continue over here and like where these two leaves meet, wherever there's 
kind of an in-between. Um, I'm going to create more of a shadow. So I'm gonna create a little bit darker red down in here. And I can go all the way of the leaf if I want, but I still want it. It's gonna be darker in there because the shadow is being cast from this leaf being above that leaf. And what's gonna happen when I color it in is it's gonna make it look like this is above this and this is farther underneath it, okay? And I'm gonna keep doing that layering thing. 